Welcome back to a new video here in Swap. In this video, we're gonna do this stinger transition using Fusion actually. On a previous video, I showed you how to do this stinger transition and it was all using it in the edit page. Let me just get rid of it for now. And in this case, we're gonna use these and we're not gonna use a Fusion composition in itself, but we're gonna use an adjustment layer. Reason for this is that then you can simply save these adjustment layer into your power bins and then you can access it and put it on any project that you want if you don't want to render out the stinger transition as a video clip if you want to render out you can also do it that way but you just gotta make sure to render it out uh, with a transparent background and if you add sound effects and stuff too then you will have to render it out because we're not able to put compound clips into the power bins yet okay anyways so the first step for this is we're gonna get our adjustment clip and I'm actually just going to measure it here so that we have the same length for these. And I'm actually going to copy these so we can do a, so we can have a full new copy. And let me just put the timeline playback at half resolution so that we don't have to spend too many resources while working on it. And also, let me just turn the cache off. OK, so now one of the things that we have to do is we're going to have to bring this in here first, because if we go in here just right away, the keyframes on it are weird. So let's so you just have to do these if you want to use an adjustment clip. And then here we're going to rename it. I'm just going to put Stinger 2 tutorial, I guess. Don't be too picky about the name. And we're going to bring these here and we're going to try to position it right in the middle. OK, we have this here. Now we can right click and then open in Fusion or simply click the Fusion here. Once we're in Fusion here, we're just going to get rid of this high quality for now. So while we are working and recording, it doesn't bother us. And the first thing that we want to do is a background node here. You'll see that it covers everything. So for now, we're going to add an ellipse here and we're actually going to take the solid out and we're going to make this really big like 1.9 or something because we're going to make these uh, occupy the edges of our screen as it goes big. OK, so we're going to make these start there at keyframe 12. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to right click here on the height. You can also do it on the width, but it doesn't matter. And then we're going to link them so that if we move them, they are both linked together. Now, once we have that, we're going to create the keyframe for the width, whichever is not linked. And then at zero, we're going to make these go all the way to zero. But before that, we're going to do the same for the border width and then at zero, we're going to make the border width go to zero. And then now we can make this one go all the way to zero. So now if we preview these, we're going to see it sort of like come in a little bit bigger. Once we have that ready, we can go to the spline tool, select everything and we're going to press F. So it's a little bit smooth. And if you want, you can already go and add the motion blur. I like to use 30 and then quality two or four. In this case, we're just going to leave it at two. Get rid of that. Now we want to copy these and paste these and we're going to create the second one. But since this is the largest one, we had that sort of like depth and shadow in it. We're going to right uh, connect these behind it. So we have this the next one at frame 12. We're just going to go and we're going to adjust the size of these and make it like uh, smaller. But since we want the background to be a, uh, we want it to be a different color, right? I forgot to change the color at first. Uh, in this case, we're going to make these yellow, I guess. And we're going to change the background of these to be, what could it be? Purple, maybe? I guess that's fine. And now we have the ability to adjust the size to cover that like that. Now we can do the same process once again. We're going to copy and paste these and add it behind so that we can add our last little circle. And for our last little circle, we're going to have to make it smaller. But you might notice that once we reach the border with the other one, there might be a little bit circle of like um, extra circle in the middle, right? So let me just change the color of this one. It's going to be black for these. And if I make it smaller, let's see, you see? Uh, so the way to fix this is we're going to have to adjust these and make these a little bit bigger all the way until the circle is complete. And I think it will be like around 28.28 should be complete. You can play around with the different values here. 0.2146, it's fine, I guess. And then we're going to make these cover it all the way until the edge. If we zoom in, we'll see it. 
Okay, we got that ready. Okay, now all of them are so sort of showing up at the same time. So the way to work around this is we're gonna select this one, which is the second one, and then we're gonna go to keyframes. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna select everything. And now you can drag this so it will start at frame three, and then we'll just end at 15, I guess. And now this other one, we're gonna do the same process and we're gonna bring it starting at frame six. So at 18 is gonna be full covering that middle section as you can see here okay now that we have everything ready what we can do is we can add a drop shadow or a shadow and also to open the selection tool panel i press ctrl and spacebar sometimes shift spacebar would work too okay we have the drop shadow and we'll see that here we can just like do the same for these but since our shadow our last background is black it's not gonna show that much so we're gonna add a shadow in this case we're gonna change the color to sort of like a little bit yellowish a little bit darker not the same and then we can offset it a little bit and make it a little bit soft so that we have that That's sort of like a little bit of a glow to it okay okay now the next step is we're gonna add a logo so we're, i have the logo right here in my media section already so we're just gonna drag that here close that down and i can connect this media in right here now i'm gonna add a transform node here so that i can make it bigger so I can adjust the size actually, and I wanna make it a little bit smaller so it fits right in the middle, right? Like that. And the thing that I'm gonna do next is also, I'm gonna add a text node. So just by clicking that, and it's gonna create a new merge node. And we're just gonna write Swalvi and move it a little bit lower like there. And I like to use next art and I'm gonna make it thin and adjust the tracking a little bit for that. So it looks a little bit fine, I guess. Okay, I like that. Now. We have that set up there and in order to animate it, I wanted to animate at the same time. So we're going to add a new transform node and we're going to check the keyframes of the first of the black ellipse here. It's going to be six and then 18. So here at six, our transform should be zero and at 18, it would be one. And we're going to go to the spline tool again and we're going to select these and press F to make it smooth. And also we can make, uh, have a, a little bit of a motion blur. As I said again, we're just gonna leave the shadow angle at 30 and the quality at 4. Now we have our intro animation ready, I guess. Uh, let's preview it. Okay, now we have this animation, nice animation. So now we have to think about how we're gonna make it go out. Since we are, since we don't want our stingers to be uh, taking too long, this one is one and a half seconds, right? It's already a little bit too slow, I think but it's fine we can adjust the speed of it later too but in order to animate it out what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this circle go backwards this one so we're gonna go to the ellipse here and at frame 23 we're gonna create a keyframe here for the size and then at 28 it's gonna go all the way small at zero and also we're gonna do the same with the border width so 23 here and at 28 it's gonna go to zero Otherwise, it will be a little bit too weird because it will just like be big and then disappear. And we're going to do the same for the transform node here because they're going to be following each other. We're going to create a size and also an angle because I wanted to rotate it. And then 28, we're going to rotate it to 360, which is going to turn left. And then we're going to make it smaller. So if we look at it now, it looks like the actual circle is rotating, although it's only this section that's rotating. Now we have that section rotating. We want to do the same for that second ellipse. Uh, you can make it go outwards or inwards. In this case, I would think we're just going to make them all go back in, right? So at frame 24, this one started at 23. So this one's going to start at 25. I'm going to create the keyframes here for both sections. And then at 30, it's going to be small and then small. And for this one, we're just gonna make it all of them go inwards actually. So, okay, we have these and create the keyframes like here, 27 and 32, five frames for each. I think it's fine like that. So there it goes. That's our stinger transition of these little balls. You can add more effects to it if you want. You can play around with it even more, but that, that is on the most basic level what we can do. And you can save these on the power beans as I said earlier, and you can also move these freely so it's it doesn't there's no limit to where you want to put them uh so that's why it's cool to have them in adjustment layers rather than using the normal transition 
uh, preset. If you want to use it as a transition preset, you just copy that all those nodes into a transition um, preset and then you will have them that way too. Now, if you want to render this, what's the best way to do it? Now, what if we want to render these and have it as an invisible with an invisible background? What do we go do about that? Now, I think the easiest way to do that would be instead of having to change the color with the color tab and getting rid of the background because if we make it a compound clip, these space will become black. What we can do is we're going to go to the effects and we're going to create a fusion composition, dragging it here. If we put it up here, we can actually have it the same length. And now we're just going to go into this one, open it in fusion, simply uh, copy these, except the media in part. Now go into this fusion composition. We're going to copy these. We're going to add a background here. And now this background, we're going to change it to transparent. Now we have these here pretty much ready. Well, all we have to do is uh, you can render it in place if you want, but it's easier if you just go to the delivery page. Now here in the delivery page, we're going to select this section here. Or, or actually, you can just use render this clip here, which is our fusion composition. And then here, name it Stinger 2, I guess. And on the format, we're going to have to uh, use QuickTime. Then the codec would be, you could use GoPro Cineform or DNH, DNXHR, but these ones will be really big files. And Grass Valley also works too, but the quality is going to be a little bit lower, I think, in that sense. Okay, and then on Cineform here, you're going to change to RGB 16, and that will allow you to export the alpha. And that is pretty much it. Then you can just leave it as it is there. If you have the audio included, it will render at the same time. Okay, now we can just click add to render and then you just render and then find it in the folder that you chose to save it at. And that is pretty much it. Now you can reuse this transition. If you had saved it as a video, you can then use it on OBS or any other like recording or streaming platform that you use to make your videos. So hopefully this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. And let me know down in the comments if you like this video, if you find it helpful. If you have any requests, also let me know. I'll try to answer to them whenever I have time. I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.